Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this plugin uh, sort of overview and review of the AccuSonus Era D. Uh, the Era D is essentially a joint denoise and dereverberation plugin. So it's a single unit that can both denoise a signal and also dereverb a signal. Sort of uh, Era D's claim to fame, or real two, two claims to fame is that it has the ability to intelligently remove uh, noise and de-reverberation without having to learn um, noise. Sort of like uh, with Isotope's denoiser or like uh, X-Noise from Waves, you know, those plugins, you sort of learn a noise profile and apply that noise, uh, uh, you know, and denoise that noise profile. With Era D, there is no noise profile to learn because it automatically learns the noise profile as the file plays. So it has uh, the ability to intelligently do that, which is really cool. Um, the other sort of second claim to fame other than the fact that it's both a denoiser and a dereverb plugin, is that the denoiser and dereverb um, units actually can talk to each other. They are aware of each other's estimations of of how they're dereverbing or denoising the signal. Um, so they can work together in fusion to uh, produce a better quality uh, signal. So one thing I will preface is that this is not a complete tutorial. I've literally just barely started using this plugin. I've just sort of jumped into it. And that's sort of maybe a third claim to fame. It's extremely easy to use. It doesn't require a whole lot of um, reading up on the manual. It literally, you can, with five minutes of practice, uh, pop this thing on and start working with it. So what I've done in advance is I have four um, dialogue tracks. And that's one of the number one things that you'll have to denoise is dialogue um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, some dialogue for film is, is done outside. You're maybe hearing flutter echoes off of a room, off the side of a, a wall, off of a ceiling, off a tile floor. Um, noise from, like, say, an AC unit, AC vent. Uh, there's all sorts of noise you're constantly dealing with the dialogue tracks for uh, film and TV. So what I did was I took uh, an Audio-Technica uh, 850B, AT850B um, boom mic. It's a shotgun mic. It's pretty high-quality uh, shotgun mic and I boomed it over my head and for all three of these examples my my mouth is about two to three feet away from the mic um, I spoke a little bit and talked about each environment that I was in and what we'll do is we will use era D to um, apply some noise reduction and uh, noise reduction and reverb reduction for all four of these examples uh, the first example is in a bedroom with a carpet floor. The second one's in a kitchen with a tile floor. The third one's in a small bathroom with a tile floor. And the fourth one is outside. So let's listen to the very first one. This is the bedroom example. So this is no, no, um, this is just the dry signal. So for this first example, the mic is about uh, three feet above my head, sort of at an angle off to my right. It's not directly pointed... Uh, at my mouth, but pointed down toward my mouth because you can't put a boom operator in front of the camera. It blocks the view. So generally the boom operator is off to the side of the shot uh, a few feet above the actor's head. Um, for this example, okay. So for this example, there's, there's a bit of uh, floor noise, a bit of background noise, uh, just from the room, from the AC vent. Um, let's turn on air D. Let's start with the D noise and D reverb all the way down. Um, there's four signal path modes that we can use. There's denoise, that's just the denoiser. D-reverb, that's just the D-reverb. Cascade is essentially the denoiser and then the D-reverb in a uh, series. And then parallel is their parallel processing. So the denoiser is being processed separately from the D-reverb. Um, typically I use the cascade option unless I, I want to omit uh, denoise or D-reverb from the signal. Parallel can sometimes give you like a more um, gently processed signal, but for most of these examples, I'm going to use Cascade. Um, a couple other controls real quick as we jump into this. It's, it's a, it's a multi-band processing unit. So each one of these bands represents a frequency band and how much processing is happening on that band, um, or how much denoising or how much dereverbing is happening on that band. So, um, the sliders here represent how much processing is happening on each band. So when these are all the way up, there's no processing happening whatsoever. As you pull these down all the way to 100%, more and more processing is happening. So these are, we're not going to pull them all the way down, but we're not going to have them all the way up either. So I'm going to start with them all the way up. 
Um, these little uh, blue knobs are essentially the intensity of of the denoising or the de reverb. It essentially is sort of like the plugin's confidence in the amount of de reverbing or de noising that is going on. So I generally keep it at fifty. Um, but if you want uh, to sort of uh, of increase or decrease the intensity, uh, you can you can play with those as well. All right, so let's try this out. I'm just gonna. We need a little bit of de reverbing for the room. You can hear some of the the slap echoes off of the walls and a little bit of de noising, mostly for the um, um, for the AC unit. And you'll see that the the plugin will sort of learn um, uh, what the noise in the background is as we play it. So there's no need to sort of learn a noise profile like with X X noise or or the isotope denoiser. So for this first example, the mic is about. Uh, three feet above my head, sort of at an angle off to my right. It's not directly pointed uh, at my mouth, but pointed down toward my mouth because you can't put a boom operator in front of the camera. It blocks the view. So generally the boom operator is off to the side. So here's the, here's the, uh, the before. So for this first example, the mic is about uh, three feet above my head, sort of at an angle off. To and then here's the after. So for this first example, the mic is about uh, three feet above my head, sort of at an angle off to my right. It's not. Now we don't want to overdo the re uh, de reverb and denoise because you're going to end up with a signal that just sounds like it's you know that's been really really washed out. So for this first example, the mic is about uh, three feet above my head, sort of at. An and actually, the crazy thing about this plugin is that even with the all cranked all the way up, it really doesn't sound that bad either. We just don't. I don't want my. I don't want my voice to start to sound like it's underwater. So, um, I'm going to pull a little bit more out. I'm going to process these bands a bit more. Pull these down just a touch. Let's give that a shot. At an angle off to my right, it's not directly pointed uh, at my mouth, but pointed down toward my mouth because you can't put a boom operator in front of the camera. It blocks. So in the graph area up here, there's basically five different options you can choose. Noise is the is the purple line. Uh, the reverb uh, is the green line. The fusion is the talk between the the denoiser and dereverber dereverb unit. And then the last two are just the dry and wet signal. So the wet signal is the process signal. The dry signal is the uh, the unprocessed signal. So we're not hitting it too hard, really, at this point, because the pink line's not that far below the the uh, yellow line. Blocks the view. So generally, the boom operator's off to the side of the shot, uh, a few feet above the actor's head. Another thing you can do is you can uh, listen to just the input signal, which is basically the same thing as me bypassing it. Um, for this example, I'm in the output signal, which is the processed signal. In the largest bedroom in my house, it's like the master bedroom. It's just a and then the difference is basically what has, what is being removed, what content is being removed. It's the carpeted uh, bedroom. It has, uh, it's about 15, 15 or 16 feet by. So that's the actual signal that's being removed. So we want this on out most of the time, unless you're checking the input and difference signal signals. Um, both the denoiser and dereverber can operate in dual mode if you're dealing with stereo material. Since I'm dealing, dealing with mono material, it's not really going to matter too much here. Um, but with dual mode, the left and right channels can sort of talk to each other, sort of in the same way that the denoise and dereverb can talk to each other and present a better quality uh, signal. All right, so that's, that sounds pretty good. Uh, let's try out our kitchen signal. Um, for this example, we're in a much bigger room. There's a lot more sort of echo from the floor, the tiled floor, the you know the granite countertops, things like that. Um, the other thing is that in this example, I turn the AC off, so the background noise is less of an issue. An issue, but the reverb is going to be more of an issue. So let's pull these down. Let's pull these up, and let's just start from scratch. Um, here is the just the dry signal by itself. All right, so for the second example, uh, I'm in a, a, a much more reverberant room. I'm in my kitchen. It's a little bit bigger room. It's about uh, 16 or 18 feet long by about uh, 12 or 14 feet wide, but it also has sort of like, in a, like a connected sort of back room that's fully tiled. So we're talking about lots of flat reflective surfaces. So let's try it with this. I'm gonna turn the output uh, back on more reverberant room. I'm in my kitchen. It's a little bit bigger room. It's about uh, 16 or 18 feet long by about uh, 
12 or 14 feet wide, but it also has sort of like in a, like a connected sort of back room that's fully tiled. So we're talking about lots of flat reflective surfaces. We have uh, uh, all tile floors. We have, uh... so again, here's the, uh, here's the before. All right, so for the second example, uh, I'm in a, a, a much more reverberant room. I'm in my very, very reverby. Here's the after. All right, so for the second example, uh, I'm in a, a, a much more reverberant room. I'm in my kitchen. It's a little bit bigger room. It's about uh, 16 or 18 feet long by about uh, 12 or 14 feet wide. But it also has sort of like, in a, like a connected sort of back room that's fully tiled. So we're talking about lots. So what I am doing here is I am, ended up using the parallel mode and using more of the de-reverb and less of the denoiser because there's less noise in the signal but a lot more reverb that needed to be taken out. I also hit the uh, the higher frequencies a little bit harder because sort of the frequencies that reflect back off a tile tend to be more of the high frequencies and less of the lows. All right, let's try this on my small bathroom. This is probably going to be the worst one in terms of uh, in terms of reverb. So let's just listen to the dry signal on that one. All right, so this example probably has the absolute worst uh, reverb problem out of any of these examples. This is me. I'm facing the mirror and the sink in a tiny, tiny little bathroom with the boom mic basically just uh, pointing in the, the doorway into the bathroom. It's like a tiny little like four foot by seven foot uh, bathroom. Yeah, that's that's pretty rough. So let's uh, let's pull out a lot of the reverb, pull out some denoiser. Let's try it in Cascade, and then I'll switch to Parallel and see which one sounds better. Uh, all right, so this example probably has the absolute worst uh, reverb problem out of any of these examples. This is me. Uh, I'm facing the mirror and the sink in a tiny, tiny little bathroom with the boom mic basically just uh, pointing in the, the doorway into the bathroom. It's like a tiny little like four foot by... Yeah, actually that sounds uh, not too bad in parallel mode because uh, it just sounds a little bit uh, more natural in parallel mode with, uh, with you know the parallel balance a little bit leaning more toward the reverb and less the denoiser. So again, here's the, uh, here's the input signal, the before signal. All right, so this example probably has the absolute worst uh, reverb problem out of any of these examples. This, And then here's the output signal, the, the processed signal. All right, so this example probably has the absolute worst uh, reverb problem out of any of these examples. This is me. Uh, I'm facing the mirror and the sink in a tiny, tiny little bathroom with the boom mic basically just uh, pointing in the, the doorway into the bathroom. It's like a tiny little like four foot by seven foot uh, bathroom, half bath, no shower. Yeah, so when you switch between the difference and the input and output, you can really hear the difference on those. All right, so let's try one last example here. This is an outside shot in my backyard. There's a lot of wind. It was actually starting to rain as well. Uh, so that was actually a perfect example of uh, a denoising rain in the background. So let's, uh, let's give this a shot here. So this is... Uh, Outdoors in my backyard, the the mic is under an awning, um, so it's not getting wet. Uh, the only difference, one of the big differences here, um, is that the um, the windscreen, the built-in windscreen, is um, the windsock or whatever you want to call it, is over the uh, over the mic in this one. It's, it wasn't over the mic in the other ones. So this is just the dry signal. So for this last example, there's really a lot of background noise. Uh, I've got the mic underneath sort of like an awning because it's actually starting to rain out here. Uh, there's several trees, so you may hear some uh, rustling of the leaves of the trees. There's also a lot of background noise from the traffic. So you can hear traffic and motorcycles and background noise. Um, let's turn this on. Um, let's pull these down a bit. Let's start with uh, just a touch. We really only need a touch of re de reverb here because the only reverb we're really getting is just the sort of slap off of the side of the house. You'll notice that outside shots rarely have reverb problems unless you're standing next to like a stone wall or something or there's like an echo coming off of something. So um, we're just going to use a touch of the D reverb. Uh, also, that sort of, you know, only having a little having a little bit of outside reverb really makes it sound like it's outside. You know, if you de-reverb it completely, it's just going to sound like, you know, like a, like a processed, you know, radio dialogue track. It's not going to sound that great. Um, so we're going to focus on this one more on the denoiser and less on the de-reverb. 
So for this last example, there's really a lot of background noise. Uh, I've got the mic underneath sort of like an awning because it's actually starting to rain out here. Uh, there's several trees, so you may hear some uh, rustling of the leaves of the trees. There's also a lot of background noise from the traffic, motorcycles, cars, things like that. Uh, you may hear the wind, background noise, uh, dogs barking. So this track's really gonna need a lot uh, cleaned up, which it's not always so bad if you have some background noise because it can sort of add to the authenticity of the shot. Uh, but if you want to get clear dialogue, it's going to be really difficult. If so here's the, uh, the unprocessed signal. So for this last example, there's really a lot of background noise. Uh, I've got the mic underneath. And then here's the process signal. So for this last example, there's really a lot of background noise. Uh, I've got the mic underneath sort of like an awning because it's actually starting to rain out here. Uh, there's several trees, so you may hear some uh, rustling of the leaves of the trees. There's also a lot of background noise from the traffic. Motor yeah, so that's really good. That, that works really great. Um, again, uh, just to sort of wrap up uh, the video, keep in mind that dialogue denoising, the goal is not to completely remove noise. Uh, or completely remove reverb. We still want a little bit of that in there and, because it sort of adds to the vibe of the scene or the, the dialogue track. Uh, you, you want sort of the location to sort of be in the dialogue track a little bit. You don't want it to be completely dry. So the goal here is not to completely uh, denoise or de-reverb the signal. It's to simply gently uh, denoise the signal so that the dialogue can come up a little bit more and be more clearly heard. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.